Aries, Ashe, Obatula, Ashe, Nila Hotep, Ashe, Anu, Ashe, Hata, Ashe, Apollo, Ashe, Da, Ashe, Zaka, Ashe, Shango, Ashe, Makali, Ashe. And in this 
case, becoming a chaos being, which we really are, those ones that rule before the gods, because the gods are our children. You must understand these particular things. So what we're dealing with here in this particular time is not that kind of a lecture that is, and so now, if, if a person is coming into consciousness for the first time, you've never heard any other consciousness before, then you need to go to black media, or cultural communication, and get John Henry Clark, and start from the beginning, because we've been in this thing about damn near a little over 10, 12 years now. For the people, you see. So my point is, what we're talking about here, uh, 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 extra knowledge, or an extension of what you already know. So whatever religion you're in, that's cool. That's not the point. The point is to enhance whatever you're in by trying to understand the shit that most people don't teach you all the stuff that was lost for the last 2,000 years. And that's the stuff that we need to deal with. We, so so we, we have, we're going deeper into this particular stuff, uh, this particular thing, and, and also what we're going to do, I'm going to do it this way. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, plus the Bible told you to study, to know thyself, Approved. It didn't say study the Bible. It didn't say study the word of the Lord or the word of Jesus. It said study. If it meant study the word of the Lord, it would only it would have specifically said study only this book. But the book came from ancient scriptures, and even the people who put it together knew ultimately that you would have to go beyond just mere moral teachings. Remember Isaiah, what is it? What was it, Isaiah 24, 40? I forgot what it was. I got it in my notes. I will give you the treasures of darkness. Got that? Check. Now check this out. You got that on, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in Sodom and Gomorrah, which was not a real city in real history, it was a, first of all, it's metaphysical, but it's a historical thing you're talking about eschatology. Eschatology means the study of end time prophecy. Look at the started when your ass became into slavery. Here in America, it was an eschatology piece because we have the same book of Exodus, which we're going to get into tonight, uh, which we're going to get into tonight, uh, Isaiah 45, 3. Isaiah 45, 3. I will give you the treasures of darkness. But the book of Exodus is the book that is supposed to be dealing with it now, which is very key because I know exactly what they're doing. But what they don't realize is that's our story, not in bondage in Egypt or Kemet, because there was never any bondage in Kemet, but it was talking about now. Because the Egyptians had the same story, and we're going to get into that today, and we're going to show you the origins of where that, where, where that actual Exodus piece came from. You see, where that Exodus piece actually came from. But one of the keys here is, um, one of the keys here is, uh, you must understand the codes and try to break these things at this particular time. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my, uh, I'm gonna get my paper, and we're going to pull libations, but what we're going to do this time, instead of pulling libations uh, with a whole bunch of water, we're going to pour it in this cup. It's got a seven-pointed a seven -point star on it, which would be real good, too, because uh, that's our star. But any star, seven-pointed star, six-pointed star, eight-pointed star, all of that, 11 point star, all of that is, is all of that is the, 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 the chief star serious, but also it is every man and every woman is a star, which is nothing but the, 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 the biological, physiological, and astronomical and astrological makeup of your own self, uh, of your own self. So we're going to uh, deal with that. Let me just get my list out. i got to find them here. And we're going to pull libations, and we can start. Uh, we can start, but I'm telling you, it, but it's getting bad. I mean, the spirit came last week and said, "You all got to move." Now, hell, we just moved to the upstairs, so you got to move in the upstairs apartment because you know, because uh, uh, people won't break in in the upstairs. Now they're saying they're gonna move because the government gonna try to come in down and set the place on fire. You see, basically. Now my point is, is um, but they can't do it if you. But see, but, but they, they, they can't do it uh, in certain places. First of all, the place that I'm in, for the mere fact that the people accept in Section 8, that automatically a certain energy is put on that actual place. Uh, and also, too, because the mentality level of the people, other than us 
in the apartment complexes is damn near on a savage level. And I'm not trying to be an elite. I'm just talking about dead niggas. You know that shit. We ain't fooling around no more. You see what I'm saying? So, so the energy is so negative and all, they can actually penetrate the place. You see what I'm saying? And it's just that way where you got a whole place and every apartment is occupied and ain't nobody got nothing on their mind. You can't tell nobody shit. Plus, there's another thing which brings to mind is this. Um, and, I, and I said this the last time, but this is very key and crucial. If you're going to help the downtrodden, you're going to have to learn not to uh, not to uh, spread your energy among the bull where you can't help nobody at all. So, you know, oh, for the last six years, oh, I was all into, oh, my people, my people, my people. But that becomes a vice. And the government is going to use that. So now, in order for you to help the downtrodden, you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to be in union among yourself, yourselves. But you can, but as far as now, all of the, the so-called this kind of program and that kind of program, that's some stuff that's at your energy. Now, like I said, when I was up in uh, Trenton, New Jersey, uh, uh, Trenton, New Jersey, and I said it the last time. Uh, these brothers opened up a university shop and they started bringing in all these speakers. And they started teaching kids after, after school. They said, well, drop the kids off. We put some sense in their head. You know what I'm saying? Because the parents now is gone. So they said, well, you just drop the kids off and we'll feed them a couple of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You don't have to worry about it. And so we're going to try to train them. And immediately, the police start killing people and killing you. So the youth and everybody ran to the university. Saying, you know, they're killing all the people and all this here, and it got, it got to be a mess. And I said, wait a minute. I said, go back and check out when all the crimes started happening with the so-called downtrodden. And you will find out that those same crimes started happening during the same time that you all opened up this place. And they said, that is correct. So now the government is using that to feed among the people. They understand that you are a priesthood. They talk about the gallery. Go get the movie. Highlander. Remember the highlight? They say you're supposed to struggle through immortality because you are immortal. You just keep reincarnating and going through bullshit. They say you're supposed to struggle until, uh, uh, until we all gather together in a faraway country that is not yet established. Okay? Now we'll show you the actual document that, that came out of Kemet in the Asclepius. They said, well, you know, when, when is this thing going to be over? They say it's going to be an extremity of you or a, 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 a new part of you that will gather in a country that is not already established. But people from all over the world will go to this country and different races will be in this country. And an aspect of your Kemites, or, if, or you Hebrew, it don't make a difference, all the same damn tribe with the same people, Sumerian, Hebrew, Kemite, Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Phoenician, you see what I'm saying? All that the same people. You will be put in the West. And in that particular part of the West, in that particular part of the West, um, a new descendant of your people will rise up and they will redeem the whole universe. Now, in Sodom and Gomorrah, we know based on this eschatology, they're talking about now. What are those Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah and they are... Uh, and, and, and it was all stuff. That's going on now. The stuff now makes Sodom and Gomorrah look like Disneyland. <laughs> but the only person that made it to the Christhood in Sodom and Gomorrah was Lot's wife. They told Lot's wife, they told them all to leave the city and don't look back. Right? But Lot's wife did what? She looked back and she was turned into a pillar of salt. It's metaphysical. The pillar is the dejet pillar or the kundalini energy, and salt is another symbol for the Christ, which is the soul. A pillar of salt, Lot's wife is the only one that made it out of the shit. Why? Excuse my French. Why? Because they say don't look back. Lot's wife was the only one that had enough sense to turn and face her inner self. Looking back or looking behind is to face your inner self. She was the only one that went within and faced the darkness. And when she faced the darkness, she rose up into a pillar of salt. It's metaphysical. It's alchemical. Salt is the ultimate manifestation of the soul. We're going to get into that today in alchemy. So, so, so Lot followed God and that ended up walking around in some damn sandals in some heat somewhere. <laughs> he 
eating some bread or some fish or whatever that shit is. Lot's got, his lot, wife got to hell on to the mothership. Just like they told him not to go and eat from the tree. And they ate from the tree, and what happened? They saw they became gods. You see what I'm saying? We're going to get into it all that today, but Lot's wife is the only one that made it. Very interesting. Very key that you understand that. Now, let's talk. Uh, and I'm sitting running them out. I ain't gave the gods theirs yet, or the, the ancestors of theirs yet. Uh, uh, and what we're going to do is go through the roll call, get the energy. I talked about going to libations and now I'm messing around. But it's a lot of great stuff. We, we, and another thing, too, I know that I, I, the energy is real good. First of all, number one, that we should be happy. This is a privilege to even be with this particular knowledge. It's even a privilege for me to actually be teaching you. It is my privilege to even go and do this particular stuff. And it is a privilege for all of us to even be the ones selected to even deal with this stuff at this particular time. Because most of our people, you, you, if you put a gun to their head, they wouldn't even accept this stuff or wouldn't even deal with it. They showed it in the movie, uh, what's the name of the movie? Uh, they Live. Remember the guy who had to beat the black man and had to damn near kill the black man so the black man would put on the black shades which represents consciousness. The white man had to beat his behind just to put on the shades, and he put on the shades, and what happened? He saw it. So for the mere fact that we are in here hungry for some particular information on Saturday, and we're saying this over and over, this is a privilege. And first they used to say, well, you know, knowledge, C. Freeman used to say knowledge is a privilege. Well, I had problems with that at first. I said, well, I thought, you know, knowledge is supposed to be God-given right to everybody. But then again, I didn't understand what it meant as when I went on and on, it is a privilege. Not a privilege that you get it, because they got bookstores and everything. If you want to get this, you can get it. The real secret of anything, there are no secrets. The privilege is for the mere fact that you are even to the particular aptitude to even deal with this stuff. Or the certain level of spirituality to even deal with this and not being scared out of your mind that you're going to hell. That you're already living. So this is a privilege for this particular stuff at this particular time. And it is a privilege. you got to believe this. It is really... A glorious moment. But on the other hand, there's another thing that's going on too. We're in spiritual warfare. Now, I'll get into that in a few minutes. Because when we do these lectures, you battle a certain segment and you break down walls. You see what I'm saying? And when you come together with a particular energy, and they talk about words of power. Now, I'm, I'm trying to find what these words of power. We got a billion words out here, so what are the words of power? Then I realized what it was. is when you come together and discuss things and try to understand, that's the word of power, the understanding. It's enough data, but you got to understand it. You get what I'm coming from here? So, the, so when we do these particular things, it is a ritual of words of power. So therefore, we understand when the... Uh, uh, when the government is trying more and more to shut these particular meetings down. You see what I'm saying? Shut these particular meetings down. It's very key that we try to understand that, especially when we're dealing with this occult uh, one. If it seems like it's something, if it seems logical, rational, or it seems like something divine, it's probably lesser. It is those things that you fail to look in the mirror that is the most divine. you got to understand that. So uh, let's go with the, with the libations. Uh, um, so what I'm going to do is going to take you some water and uh, pour the water. Uh, and what we're going to do is just going to pour it in this cup like this. And we're going to libate the plant. And we're good to go on that. So the God's got this. So then what we're going to do is we're going to call out the roll call. You know. I said, I'm going to give a special shout out to a brother named Tootie that I knew that he used to grow up with. Brother up in a, in a pecan tree about a couple of weeks ago, fell out the pecan tree and broke his neck. But anyway, I, I'm giving a shout out to the brother because when I was young, you know, he begged me that I wouldn't hit him with a brick. You better hit him with that brick and I hit him on the damn knee with a brick and his knee swole up. But anyway, the brother's going on to the other realm and all but also, I want to give a shout out. Also, I'm going to dedicate this lecture also to Brother Ramsey Brown. Now, if you remember, in the past lectures, you can get the lectures meeting of the metaphysical masters that I did in 1994. I talked about the, uh, the Randy Brown thing. I think me and Dawood is on the tape up in New York, and I went into the whole Randy Brown thing. So we're going to recap right now and go back into this because there's some stuff that went down based on the lecture. The government went and did some things. So let me explain this to you. Um, 
um, when I was growing up, I'm from a middle class family, which means that um, basically my parents were some of the richest people my grandmama was, and my grandfather was one of the richest people in the whole state down there. For the simple fact that my grandfather used to build these elaborate houses for, 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 um, for these rich white people on Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And, um, my grandfather, I think he quit school in like the sixth grade, and he couldn't, I don't think he could read. But the key is, is he was a mathematical genius. And not only that, he, 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 could, he could do all types of equations and figures and stuff, and it just probably just came to him. And he could just measure, he, he, and he could just do measurements and stuff that was out of this world. So he used to build the baddest houses in South Carolina, so he made a whole lot of money. My grandmother, on the other, uh, other hand, was a school teacher. And what the deal is, is so we were basically, basically, I didn't really want for shit growing up, basically. I lived a fair book, like me and my three brothers. And, and all. So it's not like, you know, so like I told you before, I'm a, I'm, I was a middle class person on a quest for poverty. And so, <laughs> you know, so, but on the other hand, on the flip side of that, there was a family, and the flip side of that was the boys' family in London. They lived in like a one room house. And we used to be up in the house, and I swear, if you see a polka dot dress, that's how much roaches used to be on the wall. It, the wall looked like polka dot. Like brown polka dots. I mean, it was like literally millions of roaches on the wall. And Brandy and them used to go nasty, and everybody just knew that they were the they were the poorest people in the world. But Brown, but the mama was holy sanctified them. Okay. So the deal is with me. I met Brandy in the second grade, 1968. So to me, Brandy was my best friend. I didn't give a damn, didn't give a shit. What you know? Uh, 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 what bracket he was on? You see what I'm saying? So. But, now this is the key now, because, you know, they tell you that school teachers' children and preachers' children are some of the worst children. So, like, my great-grandmama had 16 children, and all the, all the brothers, all the guys were preachers, and all the women were teachers. So, therefore, I was bad as hell, hell on wheels. But now, it's a different type of bad. You know, we was bad outside of the mama. You know, in front of the mama, in front of the grown people, that's a whole other world. You behave yourself. Now, behind them, you tell the devil. So, anyway... Anyway, when I was young, we used to, I, I, in, in elementary school, we go downtown, and you put it in a stove, I could get it out of the stove. <laughs> now, Randy, on the other hand, was holy sanctified, and he really didn't steal. But I turned Randy on to steal it. But when I did it, I opened up a can of whip ass, because I didn't have to steal no I went on retirement like a sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Randy would go in there, and Randy had a damn a pleather jacket with a line cut out that bitch. And man, <laughs> He could put a get job in it, it didn't matter. <laughs> anyway, as time went on, I got into junior high school, you know, I started getting into women and all this kind of thing. Yeah, I started kind of getting out of the little thing, you know, this little phase, you know. And I started getting out of, plus I started getting to the point where I started getting scared. I started saying, man, we're going to get caught, but Randy had no fear. So I let Randy do all this thing for me. I got a brother that's a year younger than me. He had, a, he had a gang of little boys. He always hung out with boys little, so they could look up to him. So he has a guy that be like three, four years younger than him and all. They go and steal for him. <laughs> so this is some wild stuff. I'm going to tell you. It all shapes up. So anyway, I, we got, I got out of all of that because then, then again, on the other hand, I knew better. So as I, I, I became into my teenage years, I started getting out of that because I was into girls and all that type of thing. So what happened was is I got into junior high school and Randy missed too many days, so he, I think he, he stayed back in the seventh grade. And so he basically quit school. That summer, summer of 77, I think, was, well, I think I was in like ninth grade or something, uh, just got out of ninth grade, Randy was wrestling and fell on his head for a little while. He kind of went off standing behind the, behind the house with a Bible in his hand. So to make a long story short, Randy came back to his senses, but Randy was out. I was in high school. I went through the 10th grade, 11th grade. Randy, at that particular time, was still stealing. So Randy had gotten to the point he had graduated, but he started breaking in certain people's houses. So I'm in high school and all, and I think I was in the 11th grade that year, and, there was a, and, and the cops in the town had this ring. They were breaking in banks. They were breaking in department stores, and it was like seven or eight cops. And they were stealing, just robbing, mostly white, one black brother. Anyway, they were robbing people blind. So Randy broke in the house and got caught. So the town was terrified at that time, and they had to make an example. So as a result, Randy got 15 years. First offense now. Still young. 
gone. Got 15 years. Uh, three months later, they caught the damn cops. But yet, Randy is in school, so the scene shifted. So I'm in college at the time. I'm in college at the time, and like I said, I, I go to college and stuff, and I found out to make a little system, and I said, well, hell, you know, um, I'm gonna, I get them, them loan papers and stuff, and I said, well, I said, I want to get to Atlanta. I didn't go into one college. I said, I don't have no money. I said, I know what I do. I'll go and get, get, get a loan, get in school, get three hots in a cot, and I'm doing the thing, you see, so go to another school. The key is, is the whole time that I was in school, about eight years, that I was a professional student, you see what I'm saying? I was about to get my damn pension, you know. Just basically just having a place to stay. You know, after I got what I got, I was making in a lunchroom and stuff, so. The same time I'm in school, Rand is in, in, in jail. So, I go to New York City. I'm getting ready to go to New York City because I was designing shoes at the time. So the brother named Roger Bowman, this white Jew, told me, he said, well, listen, what you need to do is you need to come up and bring your designs. And you come up on this wall and you got to pick out all your shoes. And I'm like, well, shit, I know what my shoes look like. He said, you don't understand. It looks different on paper than when they come back from Italy. So I had to fly to New York with all my stuff and go and get my shoes off the wall and then get paid. And I did his fall, uh, fall 88 collection. So anyway, I fly home, I fly home to right before I go, and they say, hey, Randy's out. Now it's interesting, Randy gets out of prison the same time I get out of college. You see what I'm saying? We go back home in that particular time, Randy at that particular time, for some reason when he got in, in, in jail, he decided he wasn't going to mangle with anybody. So for some reason, when Randy, Randy was locked in a room for 15 years down there by himself and kept himself. So when Randy got out, Randy went back to the time, and a little beyond the time he got caught, Randy went back to the time when we were in the junior high school. But yet Randy is in a like 26, 27 year old body. But his mind is like a junior, so we got to tell Randy, Randy, they don't wear them big ass shirts with them, with them people on it no more. Them, you know the most, <laughs> them damn, with them long, you know, the church from the 70s, them old silk shirts with all them people on this shit, you know, them long ass butterfly cops that Randy, they don't wear those shirts no more. Randy, you gotta learn how to shave, man, you know, this kind of thing, you know. So we literally had to bring Randy into the dog on late 20th century. <laughs> so, late 20th century. Anyway, Randy's coming along, whatever, long story short. In 1998, 1988, I started having a series of visions. I didn't think it was visions, so I used to just get up under the music and start jamming the music, and I just thought I was thinking this shit up in my head. I start seeing these pictures, these same Egyptian temples, the temples that I was showing you in the book, I start seeing these temples. So I start having these visions of these particular temples, uh, these particular temples and all. So I start having these visions. Now, I didn't know they were vision. I just thought, man, you just, I just get up under the music. I was thinking I was just making this shit up. But then again, it's even like Deborah Blair said, if the shit hasn't, doesn't exist or it can't be done, you couldn't perceive of it if it's not real. You see, so anyway, the vision is that I, the, 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 the spaceship comes and it looks like the, the, bat, the scarab beetle, Kephra. And it comes down and I get in the spaceship and I'm supposed to be going back in time. So when I go back in time, when I get back to, 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 to uh, Kemet, when I get out of the spaceship, it still got the same old ruins. And I'm like, well, hell, I'm, I'm like in 1988. I didn't go anywhere because all this shit is ruined. You know, uh, it's, it's ruins. So now, as a result, and I didn't bring the colony this time. I sold some the last time. But as a result, only thing that was new was a colony. Now, anybody know this is a colony? Anybody know what a colony is? Uh, they got one right down middle of town, right up by um, Planet Hollywood. This is a colony. If you ever see this particular structure, you know, and, it, uh, and you go through it, it's a colony. They got one downtown. Anyway, this is your pie symbol. We talked about that the last time. They said the Egyptians didn't have pie, but this is your pie symbol. Well, anyway, I saw this colony there with all this Egyptian writing on it, and it had a doorway in mahogany wood, but the doorway was locked. Now, I knew if I could get the chain off this door, if I stepped through the door, maybe something else would happen. So I'm resting trying to get this chain off. Meanwhile, there's an old ragged shack, and they got some slaves on the shack sitting on there, and they're waiting for me to get in this doorway. So I finally get in the door, and when I step through the doorway, it's down there like the Wizard of Oz, you know, when she, the house falls down from the black and white, and she opens up the damn door, and the shit is all in color. Well, when I step in the doorway, 
I'm in the other dimension of two, three thousand years ago. Meanwhile, the Egyptians or the, or the Canaanites, they were watching me trying to get in there in the doorway. So what they do is, as soon as I make it through, I see all these particular black people all dressed up in gold and all hooked all up, and they going crazy. They, they, they are hollering and, 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 you know, going crazy because they're glad I made it through. Meanwhile, I look back, and the slave family is on the, on the front porch crying like a baby because I guess they're glad I went to it. represents two dimensions merging together. So the people get me, grab me, put me on the show, and they're going to take me to the Pharaoh, which is seated in front of a temple that looks like this, the Temple of Luxor. So the Pharaoh is, is so they're going to take me, and it's a long procession, and, and, and the temple is about from here to the West End Mall. So soon as they, so they be walking, by the time they get me to the temple, I see the Pharaoh and his wife sitting out there, and I'm going towards the actual temple, and when I get up on the Pharaoh, who guess who the Pharaoh is? Randy Brown. Randy Brown. You see what I'm saying? So the moral of the story is, you know, it's just like all of us, we great people. So I, I, I visioned this thing, and it wasn't until I got deeper into the consciousness and I did a year on studying Egyptian art or Camite art that I saw some of the same temples in some outer print books or in some books and some old paintings that they first did when they went up in the chemical before the paint fell off. I saw some of the same temples I saw in the vision. So I told this story. You heard the story to some of the people. Anyway, the first of 97, the government comes and gets fucking Randy Brown. Because like I said, you know, they, 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 got my, they got my tapes back in 94. And so the first in 97, the government comes and get Randy Brown. So what they did, they set him up. Uh, he works at this little, like a locker thing, they kill hogs downtown, you know, they kill animals, you know, meat packing flat. So anyway, they told him to come down and clean up the place, and they told him to clean, they, they told him to do some spring cleaning or whatever, because it was like in the fall, somewhere, it was like in January or something, so whatever. They told him they wanted to do some cleaning, so he went down and he cleaned up around the cash, they told him to move the cash register, they wanted to clean the um, counter, so when he moved the cash register and cleaned up and set it back, that night they went in and broke in the place and stole a whole bunch of money. They called the cops and said that they believed it was him, because when the cops did the fingerprint, back him having a record, he was in prison for 15 years, his fingerprints all over the cash register, they set him up and he go back to jail. Now the key is, as I know this particular part is this, the key is, is that in actuality, some of us know people in your life, and even if you don't know people, they are sacrificing and getting the hell kicked out of them so we can go and learn something that we don't supposed to be knowing. So the mere fact that we sit up and say, oh, this is all bullshit, you got to realize, the last 10 years, I mean, there's thousands of our people been sacrificed, and I know that this brother is locked down today. It's like almost an alter ego. He's locked down today because of me. Not so much in what I did or whatever the thing, but I'm just saying that's the way the government did because they didn't try to get to me. In actuality, when my girl got the channel on it, in actuality, they actually thought that he was the key to the puzzle when I said that he was the pharaoh. See what I'm saying? When I put that on the roof, they actually thought, so they went and got him for that particular reason because they're looking for the Messiah. You got to understand how this particular thing is going on. So now last week, last Sunday on x file they had this so-called baby Antichrist thing was born. Anybody saw x file last week? They, they had this devil thing was born. And all right. First of all, that's the Christ. We're going to get into that type of thing and all. But this is a very key that you understand this stuff. When we go into these Malfadamus prophecies today, this is very key that you understand what's actually going on at this particular time.